Hello, today we will talk about exceptions and interrupts in MIPS. This presentation contains the definitions of exceptions and interrupts, coprocessor registers as well as a brief explanation of an exercise we were assigned. Let's start with exceptions. What is an exception? It is an event that happens when you run a program that disturbs the normal flow of its instructions. Some examples are Null pointer exception, file not found exception, division by zero. Let's continue with interrupts. An interrupt is a signal that encourages the operating system to stop working in one process and start another one. Some examples are, pressing of key in keyboard and hardware timer expired. How to deal with them? In MIPS we use some extra registers which are called coprocessor registers to handle interrupts and exceptions. An example of these registers is register number 9 which is used for timer interrupts. How can we access these coprocessor register? Using the first instruction we can move the data from the RT register of coprocessor 0 to the general purpose register RD. Using the second instruction we can move data from the general purpose register RT to the RD register of coprocessor 0. Let's move on to the status register. Beat 1, which is the exception level, becomes 1 when there is exception. When the exception handler is running, it cannot be disturbed by interrupts and the EPC register which contains the address of the problematic command, is not refreshed. When it ends, the exception handler assigns the value 0 to the exception level bit. Also, when interrupt enable has a value of 1, interrupts are enabled, and when it has a value of 0, the interrupts are disabled. We also show a piece of code on how to enable interrupts. About the cause register, bits 2 through 6 determine the type of the exception. Let's continue with the assignment we had. We were asked to have an integer number to be read from the user and the program had to print an appropriate message every time the interrupt happened. These are the results. The user entered a delay time of 200 milliseconds. The program then printed timer expired after 200 milliseconds and reset. Finally, in the second part of the assignment, we were asked to encode the user input reading from the receiver data and printing from the transmitter data. The input was encoded using Caesar's cipher which in our case was 5. For example if the user typed the character B then the program should print the character G. This is the result which shows the encoded alphabet. It is also very important to have the mapped I.O. signal enabled. Thank you for watching the video.